greetings to all in today's session we are going to start with the intermediate chemistry which is helpful on the international platform if you are preparing for any entrance exam or competitive exam as well and india level je advanced and je mains examination for technical education stream called iit and nit entrance exams and also for neat chemistry for medical entrance examination telangana mset and andhra pradesh mset for engineering entrance exams in addition to all these if you are aspiring for any competitive exam the kind of explanation provided here will be very much helpful the content retrieved from the previous year question papers and a detailed explanation will be provided to you i will assure that the kind of session will be very much helpful for your uh, dream entrance or any kind of career opportunity let's enter into our question number 1 this is the question given based on iupac nomenclature of organic compounds and here provide the iupac name for the following organic compound here is the long chain with the carboxylic acid as the functional group and a substituent is given with the chloro and another branching is also there that is methyl in this compound we have to start with the end where highest priority group is located so that the numbering will be starts from this carboxylic acid and being it is the carboxylic acid we have to go for alkanoic acid is a common iupac nomenclature and moreover we have to go for the long chain as the parent chain so that 1 2 3 4 5 6 carbon chain is taken hence hexanoic acid is the name alkanoic acid is the general Uh, iupac nomenclature for the carboxylic acid over here for this compound we have to give the numbering in this order first carbon will be the carboxylic acid second will be the second carbon 3 4 5 6 on the fourth carbon you can find the chloro so that uh, indicate four chloro on the fifth carbon side chain methyl is there five methyl and being it is the sixth carbon length so that hexanoic acid is the iupac name so in order to mention the substituents we have to opt we have to add the alphabetical order c will comes first over m that's the reason why chloro will be indicated first over methyl the final name of the compound is 4 chloro 5 methyl hexanoic acid is the iupac name of the given organic compound by this question number 1 is completed let's go with the question number 2 the mixture is separated using the apparatus shown so here separation of the mixtures are possible in different ways separating funnel is available and evaporation will be there and uh, solubility method melting point boiling point will be there and it is the method to separate the solid and liquid by the process called filtration here we are taking the mixture of compounds and uh, uh, poured into the funnel and that uh, funnel is equipped with the filter paper it is a simple filtration process you can see and the drained solution will be collected in the beaker so by this what kind of mixture can be separated the four options are provided option number a will be aqueous copper sulfate aqueous sodium chloride aqueous means what water soluble compound it is being both the compounds are water soluble we can't separate the uh, solutions by means of filtration aqueous copper sulfate and copper metal one is the solid and another is a liquid so that it is obvious to separate the mixture filtration is very much helpful to separate solid from the liquid component so that the option number b will be the correct answer let's move on to any other options as well copper and sulfur copper is the metal and a solid sulfur is also the kind of solid compound it is being it is amorphous but it is the solid in nature both the solids can't be separated by simple filtration ethanol and ethanoic acid both are liquids liquid liquid can't be separated solid solid can't be separated aqueous aqueous can't be separated only the probability is aqueous solution and metallic copper let's see what is mean by filtration filtration is the technique for the separation of both the components uh, namely solid and liquid whenever solid liquid mixture drained through this filter paper solid will be left over the filter paper in that funnel and the liquid will be entered into the beaker whichever uh, present in the bottom of that funnel so this is the way the filtration is carried and we can separate solid from the liquid the correct option will be option number b for question number 2 let's move on to question number 3 here we have the mapping 
problem and it is related with the spectroscopy. Electromagnetic waves are provided, their corresponding wavelengths are given. We have to give the correct arrangement of waves with their wavelengths. Right? Electromagnetic spectrum is uh, fragmented into different ranges. Highest energy will be a cosmic rays and the next level will be X-rays. Ultraviolet will be there followed by visible and infrared microwave, radio waves, AM waves will be there. This is the way we can segment, we can, uh, we can uh, stratify all the fragments of electromagnetic radiation in that. Uh, if, when you're ascending, when you're ascending from cosmic rays to the radio waves, what happens? Slowly wavelength got increased. The fundamental thing in order to find out the relation between their waves and wavelength is, as we are moving from X-rays to the radio waves, so gradually wavelength increases. So that radio waves are finding highest wavelength. AM, wave, AM radio waves are nothing but amplitude module, modulation waves right so this kind of waves are having highest wavelength which is given with the positive sign 10 power 2 meters and followed by next will be way uh, next will be microwaves where um, our mobile phones uh, our mobile phone signals are collected in this microwave region itself microwaves are next level next level is found with the 10 to the power negative 2 meters and the next level will be ir infrared radiation our TV remotes are having infrared radiation waves. Okay. So this is found just above than this. So that 10 power negative 4 meters. And uh, least wavelength is given for X-rays. That is 10 to the power negative 10 meters. So this is the least wavelength. As the negative power increases, what happens? Value of that diminishes. So that least wavelength is X-rays. Highest wavelength is 10 power 2 meters. It is the positive value. So A can be mapped with 2. A can be mapped with 2. B can be with 3. Then infrared rays with the 10 to the power negative 4 meters. And X-rays with the 10 to the power negative 10. This can be assigned in this electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is nothing but segmentation or fragmentation of the various, various electromagnetic radiations in accordance with their wavelength or else energy or else frequency is called electromagnetic spectrum right in this electromagnetic spe spectrum you can find gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet infrared radars fm will be there television will be there am amplitude module waves will be there these many fragments are found and in between ultraviolet and infrared, a small segment is known as a visible light where you can find the rainbow colors. VIPGR colors are available, right? So if you see gamma rays 10 to the power negative 14 meters, X-rays are 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 10 meters, ultraviolet 10 to the power negative 8, and a visible lays in the range of 10 power negative 6, infrared 10 power negative 4, radar is 10 power negative 2, nothing but a microwave only, right? So 10 power, neg uh, 10 power 2 or 10 power 4 belongs to uh, AM, FM, TV, AM, all these are in this positive values, right? So this is the way we can segment all these fractions based on that values. So without knowing the exact term, just we have to arrange all the values in an increasing order. X-rays will be the least one. Least is given in the option number one. Infrared will be the next level that is 10 to the power negative four. Microwave will be next level so that 10 to the power negative two. And the highest wavelength is accorded for the AM radio waves that is uh, only the positive value 10 power two meters. This is the way we can arrange. For question number three, option number four is the correct answer. Let's move on to question number four. It is the question given from the atomic structure where dual nature of the compound, dual nature of the electrons are given by de Broglie. The graph which shows the variation of de Broglie wavelength of the particle and its associated momentum, right? Whenever momentum is plotted against the wavelength, what will be the what will be the plot? What will be the graph? That graph represented clearly and correctly in option number four. This is called a curvature. That curvature is significantly known as 
rectangular hyperbola whatever curvature is there that is called a rectangular hyperbola and in order to explain that one we have de broglie equation de broglie gave the dual nature of the electron particle and the wave nature as well lambda is equal to h by mv will be there h is the planck's constant m is the mass of the electron v is the velocity of the electrons in meters per second so m mass and velocity the product of mass and velocity is taken as the momentum so that equation can be confined to lambda is equal to h by p p is the momentum momentum is equal to mass into velocity so that h is uh, lambda is equal to h by p being h is the constant being h is the constant if we remove the h what happens there is a reciprocal relation means inverse proportionality you can observe because this uh, momentum is there in the denominator so that reciprocal as the wavelength increases momentum got decreases so curvature is obtained that is called rectangular hyperbola so this is clearly given in this clearly given in this option number 4 for question number 4 option number 4 will be the correct answer let's move on to question number 5 at 300 kelvin and 760 torr pressure the density of the mixture helium and oxygen gas is 0.543 grams per liter the mass percent of oxygen approximately is r gas constant is given as 0.0821 liter atmosphere kelvin inverse mole inverse so by using this data we have to detect we have to depict the mass percentage of oxygen here this is the problem given from the gaseous state of the matter and here the mixture is helium and oxygen temperature is provided on the kelvin scale as 300 and 760 torr pressure is provided density of the mixture is uh, also given mass percentage is to be calculated for that the answer will be option number b 80 mass percentage of oxygen is 80 and the else helium will be 20 let's see how can we calculate here whatever density provided that density directly proportional to the composition if density is known we can obviously calculate its composition the formula for density is mass by volume mass of uh, we can calculate individual densities of two gases which ever present in the mixture one is helium second is oxygen density of the helium is equal to 4 by 22.4 so mass is uh, helium atomic weight is 4 and uh, one mole of helium gas able to occupy 22.4 liters volume this is the standard value 4 by 22.4 is equal to 0.17 gram per liter density of oxygen oxygen molecular weight is 32 occupying one mole occupying the standard volume 22.4 so that its density is 1.42 gram per liter let's assume number of moles of helium are x oxygen will be 1 minus x this is about number of moles okay then 0.17 is the density of helium can be multiplied with its moles plus density of oxygen multiplied with 1 minus x is equal to total density right density at the standard temperature and pressure stp denotes standard temperature and pressure right so 0.543 total density is provided within the problem as 0.543 the density value is taken over here and the uh, the given temperature is 300 kelvin standard temperature is 273 kelvin 300 over 273 multiplied with the uh, one atmospheric pressure is the standard value our given value is 760 so that 1 by 760 so if you go for calculation density at the standard temperature and pressure is given as 0.455 right so a 0.17 x plus 1.42 minus 1.42 x so we expanded this term is equal to density that density is 0.455 0.17 x minus 1.42 x uh, we are taking x terms one side and uh, without x terms in either side so that the value will become minus 1.25 x is equal to minus 0.97 so x is equal to 
minus 0 0.97 by minus 1.25. Negative, negative get compensated. The value will be 0 0.76. 0 0.76 almost is equal to 0 0.80. That is the mole fraction of heavier gas. Heavier gas is oxygen here. So if you want to convert mole fraction into percentage of mass, that can be multiplied with 100 so that 80% of oxygen is there. This is the way we can solve the problem. For problem number five, answer number B is the correct answer. Let's move on to last question of the session. The nitrate of which of the following metal does not liberate nitrogen dioxide gas on heating? Nitrogen dioxide gas is not evolved during the, during the boiling or heating of the given substance of nitrate. Let's see which is the correct answer. Uh, the question is given from inorganic chemistry and uh, lead, barium, lithium, potassium are given. All these are said to be metals only. Lead is the metal of P block. Barium is the metal of S block, but of a second main group element. Lithium is a first main group S block element. Potassium is a first main group element S block. Among all, potassium is not able to give nitrogen dioxide gas upon heating. In the A loha nitrate, nitrogen dioxide vayunu vidhala chedam ledu. Potassium is not liberating nitrogen dioxide. Let's see how can we see that. When lead nitrate is boiled or heated, that decomposed into lead oxide and nitrogen dioxide gas will be evolved. Along with that, oxygen is also evolved. So that we can see lead nitrate is giving nitrogen dioxide. This is the correct answer only. Barium nitrate upon heating, barium oxide, nitrogen dioxide, oxygen. Same, just like lead, here also oxide, nitrogen dioxide and molecular oxygen get, gas got evolved. So here also you can find a nitrogen dioxide gas. If you go with lithium nitrate, lithium nitrate is a lesser reactive. That's the reason why lithium oxide, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas is evolved. Here also you can find a nitrogen dioxide gas. Whenever potassium nitrate was taken, uh, being it is highly reactive, able to convert uh, converted into nitrate turned into nitrate means one of the oxygen got reduced and that oxygen converted into molecular oxygen. It is not completely decomposed. Rather, nitrate is converted into nitrate compound. And the molecular oxygen is evolved where you can't find a nitrogen dioxide brown color. Yes. So here, the nitrate which is not giving uh, nitrogen dioxide gas is potassium. By this, we completed the session. And hope this will be very much helpful for your preparation. Thank you very much for your patient listening. And uh, if the session is very much helpful, if really helpful to you, you can like the channel and comment which part is helpful for you for your preparation, serious preparation and share with the friends who are preparing seriously for the examinations like entrance or any competitive. Subscribe the channel in order to get the more such kind of videos for you. And thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you one and all.